The Seattle Kraken are hosting the Winter Classic this year. Erica Eliala, the host of Locked On Kraken, is here to talk about everything going on in Seattle and to get us ready for the game. All that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. It is my pleasure to welcome in the very busy, the very talented Erica L. Ayala, the host of Locked On Kraken. And Erica, here you are in the middle of the preparations for the Winter Classic. Let's just start with this. How important is it? What does it mean to this city and to this the NHL's newest franchise to be hosting this game? I think it's huge. First of all, we have the two newest franchises playing in the Winter Classic. The Seattle area has never had a Winter Classic hosted by the National Hockey League. So, of course, this is huge. And I'm not sure if you can hear that roaring sound behind me, but that's the crowd from Lumen Field as the Seahawks, as the, at the time we're recording, are playing. And so there's literally going to be a spillover of all of those fans at Lumen Field who will come out and have an opportunity to be a part of the NHL's fan village. And I understand, at least on the Kraken side, I, I didn't get to ask any of the Golden Knights, but some of the NHL players are also making their way over to Lumen Field to catch some football. And of course, the, the Washington Huskies also having a, a really good run in college football. So to have the Winter Classic nestled in all of that is huge. And T-Mobile Park has been an, an arena that the NHL has felt really allowed them to get creative when it came to some of the field design, not just what it looks like, but the, the actual three dimensional aspects, the, with the walls as high as they are, the NHL was able to really build up from the ground, from the field. And so all of these elements, I, I asked Steve Mayer, who's the chief content officer over at the NHL between the crowd that the Kraken is, is going to draw the fans that are coming from other sports. The fact that we are on target to sell out the, the winter classic, it does seem like Seattle after this opportunity on Monday, will have a chance to host a marquee event for the NHL sometime in the future. Well, that that's always uh, appreciated. And look for the, for the Kraken. Well, let, let me ask you this first. Your thoughts on their uniforms for this game, because always have the special uniforms. How do you think the Krakens work out? It's a great question. I think I'll start by saying that the jersey reveal was a little bit odd. <laughs> we saw actually Utah, the Utah Jazz, as in the NBA team, be the first to unveil that look for us. But if you look at the Seattle Kraken logo in particular, you'll see that it's reminiscent of the Seattle Metropolitans actually so much so that there is a pending lawsuit <laughs> right now uh it will not right the in, any injunction if there will be one will not be in time for the winter classic and so uh, my understanding is that we will be moving forward but you see that that s that the seattle metropolitans wore for those not familiar the seattle metropolitans actually are the first ever team from the united states to win the stanley cup and they did so against the montreal canadians so to have that history to have kind of the the pinstripe if you will the hockey version of a, of a of a pinstripe and those blocked colors i think is really great i i was saying early when i saw the design i would have liked a little more green just to really bring it back to the metropolitans but 
given the, the lawsuit that I just mentioned, I guess we know why <laughs> there isn't. But overall, I think it really embraced the colors of the Kraken, of course, the light blues and the teals that, that, the, that the team uses, and did their best to, again, bring that back to history, which is a part of the Winter Classic an event that the NHL has been hosting for several years now. You're there at the media events. How excited are these players to be hosting this event and to be participating in this event? Of course, there is excitement. And it's been interesting to follow the Seattle Kraken leading up to Monday's game because they had a big game against Philadelphia on Friday. Not to mention that this game against the Vegas Golden Knights is for standings points and it's a divisional opponent so while there definitely is excitement and i got to spend time with the team right after they were on the ice with their families there's definitely excitement for this but there's also an underlying understanding and appreciation that the way the kraken have been playing to date in really the last eight games let's say we're on a, a little bit of a win streak right now there is an understanding and hopefully an expectation to just stay and steady the course. And so this is huge for the Seattle Kraken as a team fighting for a playoff spot. But of course, as we've already talked about, this is huge for the city. It's huge for players like Vince Dunn, who's never played in a Winter Classic. It's huge for players like Brian Dumoulin, who I believe on the Kraken roster anyway, has played in the most outdoor games. But yes, there is excitement, but this is still business as usual for the Seattle Kraken. You mentioned business as usual, four game winning streak coming into this. What has been the difference over the last four games? And you mentioned the last seven or eight. What what has been what has this team been doing better to be playing better? And I will start with quoting Chris Drieger and even Vince Dunn. But both of them told me in the locker room that the thing that's been different is defense. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure to quote them, Gil, because you and I have talked a lot. And you know, I'm always harping and always carrying the banner for a solid defense. But that has been what one of the differences, because we know that Joey Decord in particular has been playing great. We know that Chris Drieger, who played his first NHL game since May of last year, had a really great performance in Calgary. So goaltending, even Philip Grubauer before his injury, um, and he was really hoping to get back for the Winter Classic, but he will not be healthy enough. We know that goaltending has, has given the Seattle Kraken a chance, but it has been the defensive effort. And I'm not just talking about blue liners. I say this a lot, but it's really the, the focus on a defensive effort. It's a focus on forechecking. We're a, a, a much better team when we're aggressive on the forecheck. And just being smart, knowing when to lay off and make sure you're cutting off angles and that you're working on gap control, but also knowing when to accelerate and really go after those 50-50 pucks to regain possession and to recycle the puck into the offensive zone. So the, the contribution to defense has been amazing. I think Tomas Tatar coming over in a trade, it, the, the, the timeline aligns with the Seattle Kraken being able to get more offense. He's on that top line with Everly and Beneers. And so giving those two options, not just uh, to pass to so that Tatar can set up and score, but also he just gives that line a little bit more physicality. So I think it's just been a mix of a lot of different things, and they're all – starting to align whereas early in the season it was not aligned at all for the seattle crack and you have great performances in one category and then everything else would be lower than what the kraken what the kraken expectation is is what i should say so i really think that they again are starting to to put everything in alignment and and be where they want to be as a hockey team while knowing that there's still a lot of work to do yeah, and, and is it possible? I mean, it, it, there's plenty of season left. Can they fight for a playoff berth this year? So, Gil, yes, of course, there's still a chance to make a playoff run. That's what the Seattle Kraken want to do, especially that they, especially because they were able to make it to the second round in the playoffs last year, and they felt that they had a little bit more to give. And so we heard from Jordan Everly, who was down at field level with us on Thursday, and he said, when you take a look at the Western Conference, when you take a look at the Pacific Division, there is still time. And he told us, hey, in 20 games or so, hopefully I'm standing here talking to media and we're where we want to be. But what Jordan Everly also said, which I think is very true, is that 
the Seattle Kraken know that they're not playing their best game just yet. They're getting a lot closer than they were, especially when we had that seven-game, eight-game skid earlier in the season. But now they're starting to string wins together. This is the first time this season that we've had four consecutive wins. It's been two wins here and then a loss, and then another two and a loss. So, yes, there is still time. There's still plenty of work to do. And the Seattle Kraken have to stay healthy. But the good news, we did see Andre Burakovsky come back in that last home game at Climate Pledge Arena of 2023. It seems like Jaden Schwartz is on his way back. He was on the ice with the team at the family skate and, and the practice that they had prior to Monday's game. So things are looking good there. You're always going to have to deal with injuries. But those were key players missing for the Seattle Kraken. And then, of course, Philip Grubauer has been our presumptive starter Although I don't know, Joey Decord and even Chris Jeeger might be pushing the issue there. So I think, yes, there's absolutely a chance. It has to continue to be a strong defensive effort. I think, again, players like Tomas Tatar opening up things for Maddie Beniers to be a more consistent point scorer. And I said it all this season, but that third line, or at least what we call our third line, centered by Yanni Gord with Ellie Tolvanen and Oliver Bjorkstrand, a.k.a. the maestro, that is the line where as that line goes, the Seattle Kraken go. And so I'd love to see them get on the score sheet a little more consistently in 2024. All right, Erica, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Well, just like all of our Locked On podcasts, you can find the show on YouTube. We just cracked a thousand subscribers, so we appreciate subscribe and notifications over there. And then on social media, you can follow at Locked On Kraken for all of the information. And anywhere you find the show, you'll find me. All right, Erica, thank you so much and enjoy the Winter Classic. Thank you so much, Gil. Have a great one. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets win or lose the app is so easy to use and there are so many different ways to bet like live same game parlays find bets in the new explore tab or make a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find popular parlays and a lot more and it's not just the nfl you've got college football you've got the nba college basketball and yes you could use your knowledge of the nhl on FanDuel as well Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL.